Hey, this is Ine. Welcome back for another video on this channel. Today, I want to show you how you can implement a multi time frame moving average indicator in the MetaTrader 5. So, I have the result on the screen here already. You can see this expert advisor is attached to the 15 minute chart, but it is showing the one hour moving average. So, you can see if we switch to the one hour, it is pretty smooth, everything is fine, we have one value per candle, but if we go down the time frames, we will see that um, it looks like it is taking steps, and in fact, it is taking steps, because here we can see that every uh, four candles only, we see a new value, because here we do still see the one hour moving average, but it is attached to the 15 minute chart. And this also works if we go down to, for example, the five minute chart. And you can see the um, yeah the steps are just getting a little bit longer. But we can, what we can also see is here, um, the moving average does not change its appearance. Like the values pretty much stay the same, even if we change the time frame. Like have a look, for example, at this um, curve here. Uh, it is going like this, and if we go to the 15 minute time frame, um, yeah, it will it will still go like this, also in the M M30 and one hour time frame. So the values are always the same. So before I explain the code, <clears throat> let me tell you already beforehand that you can also download the code with uh, one click in the school community, Automated Traders Elite. Check it out. I will also post the link below this video as a pinned con comment if I do not forget. And in this um, community, I upload the codes from my YouTube tutorials. And also, I scheduled the first live meeting next uh, next Sunday where I will help you with your coding questions. You have a seven-day free trial period. So there's really nothing you can lose. Just check it out, out and see me in the live call on Sunday. But let's get back, back to the uh, moving average here. So, I mean, the program, I explained it, it's, it's very simple. Um, it also works in the higher time frames, of course, but usually you want to do something like this with a, um, yeah, if, if you want to have a, a higher time frame moving average on the lower time frames and not really a lower time frame moving average on the higher time frames. So do, how does the code look? I finished the code already and I will not code it live with you. I will just explain it here. So this is the multi time frame moving average. It is an indicator, of course. Indicators usually have a lot of properties. This is different compared to an expert advisor. Um, first of all, the property indicator chart window, it says that the indicator should be displayed in the chart window indeed and not in a separate window like, for example, the RSI indicator is. Then we do have a bunch of properties to say that, first of all, we need one buffer, so a series of um, numbers pretty much, which is then displayed in the one plot that we also need for this program. So these are the properties that say that, that we pretty much have one line only, and that is this, that's exactly how the moving average looks. We have one value for every bar, and this is one line. So we have one buffer and one plot. Then we have a bunch of properties to define the look of the um, indicator. So we can define a default color, a style, a draw line, which means that we are drawing a line and the width of this indicator. I made it a little bit bigger so it's easier to see in the chart. Um, but yeah, if we double click the program, you can see since we added this as properties, we can also change it here. Like we could, for example, go down with the width and we could also change the color to um, black, for example, or any color you like. We could theoretically change also the style, but the style can only be changed if you have a width of one. And also for the moving average, it kind of makes sense to have a... Um, yeah, this solid line. So here you can see we can change the color and the width of the um, line easily. And then we have a bunch of input uh, variables. So what we do here is, uh, of course, we will need a time frame input. We need the period, the shift, the method, and the applied price. These four are the ones that we know from the moving average already. But what we have here is, um, for example, also the time frame. And this is what we have to define here in the inputs of the multi time frame moving average. So as you can see right now, I'm showing the one hour moving average with these settings 
in all of the charts. But I could also go ahead and say, for example, I want to show the four hour. And then, um, yeah, there will be, of course, a, a different picture. So this is uh, where we can really set what time frame we want to display or what um, moving average we want to display in every chart. And yeah, the rest is pretty much what we know already. We can, of course, change this. Um, I don't know, change uh, some of these values. I mean, actually, it should be possible to change everything and it will just um, yeah, really change the, the outcome or the look of this, um, of this program here. And yeah, so um, what else do we have? Yeah, these are the, the settings, as I said, for the normal moving average. Then we do have a global variable, which is called moving average, just, um, which is an array. This is where we want to store the data that are then displayed in the plot that we have on the chart. And we need a handle for the moving average with a time frame, pretty much. So this is a very simple implementation of a multi-time frame moving average. We are just using the normal IMA function here because it makes it really, really easy. And this is what we do in the on init. We initialize this uh, variable here with a, a handle for the moving average that we want to display in every chart. So we use all of the inputs here, but we do not use the shift value. Um, instead, what we want to do is we want to or we want to use the shift value here. We say plot index set integer and for our only plot, which has index number zero then, we want to say plot shift and here we use the moving average shift that we do have here in the inputs. And then uh, here before we do this, we also set the index buffer. So what we do here is uh, we say that for or buffer number zero, we then want to store the values in our moving average array here. So this means that automatically um, the uh, buffer number zero will be identified with the values of the moving average. And you can see it here, like in the data window, for example, every bar has one value and this is coming from the moving average array. Also, since we only have one plot and one um, buffer, this will then be displayed in the chart as the only plot. We also set this array as a series, which makes working with it a lot easier. Setting an array as series means that um, it is, um, you can address it from, from the right side pretty much to the left side. So the very last value or the very, uh, or the current bar will be buffer number or index number zero in the array. And if we go further back in the charts, the number will increase. If we would not have, a, have it set as a series, it was, would be the other way around. Then for our buffer, the very first bar on the very left side of the chart would be buffer number zero. And the last bar here would be a very high, uh, sorry, index number. But we want to have it as a series to make working with it very easy in the onCalculate function. The onCalculate function then is the function in expert uh, indicators that is used uh, or called whenever it is necessary to um, calculate the values again. What we want to do here is, first of all, we want to get the, um, the time zero, which is pretty much the current, the starting time of the current bar of our time frame that we want to calculate here, because it is necessary that we do not only calculate the last bar, like it is normal for a moving average, but instead we have to um, um, calculate the last x bars. Because if we go down in, a, uh, in the time frame here, you can see, for example, if I show the four hour uh, moving average on a five minute chart, then it is of course necessary to not only calculate the value for the last bar, but for a very, um, yeah, for many bars here in this example, for example, for 40, uh, for 34 bars right now. So this is why we're getting the timestamp of the last bar in the time frame chart. Then we get the shift value and this is um, not the shift value of the, we can also call this, call this a limit, which will maybe uh, take the confusion away because the moving average also has this shift input. So here we um, want to define the limit, and this is exactly what I explained before. How far do we have to go back and calculate the values again? And this is um, 
taken from the time zero time here. We just find the timestamp. Uh, oh no, not sorry, not the timestamp, but we find the the bar where the um, the last bar in the time frame time period started. But we find it in the current uh, chart period, and this is important. So, for example, in this example, we are showing the four-hour uh, moving average here on the chart, and the I bar shift function would return like 35, for example, because this is in the current chart time frame where the current bar in the time frame time frame starts. I know this is a bit confusing, but if you have a look at it on your own PC, it will be easier to understand. Then we check if we already calculated the indicator values before, because if we did not, then we want to set the limit as rates total minus one. And rates total is one of the parameters here of the onCalculate function, and it holds the total amount of bars in the chart of the chart time frame here. So for the, for the very first execution here, we have to calculate for every bar, and afterwards we just um, have to calculate for the limit that we calculated here. So we only do this, as you can see here, if previous calculated is equal to zero. Then we do have the main loop, and this is where we set a value for the moving average or the multi-time frame moving average for every single bar, and we store a value for every single bar in the moving average array here. How do we do this? First of all, we create a, um, another array where we want to store the value of the moving average in the time frame period, like the usually higher period from the inputs. This will be an empty array at first. Then we get the time of um, the current bar that we are looking at in the chart time frame. And with this loop here, we are looping, as I tried to explain before, we are looping through every single bar because limit is either rates total minus one, or then afterwards it is the um, index of where the time frame bar starts. So then we are looping through a bunch of bars. We always get the timestamp of the bar in the uh, period current um, uh, in the in the current chart time frame. So we get the uh, the time for for every bar in the chart time frame, and then we want to get the index again of this specific bar, but in the time frame, time frame, so in the, in the higher time frame, pretty much. Because next, what we want to do is we call the copy buffer function with a handle for the um, usually higher time frame moving average. We want to get the moving average value by using the index here. We only get one value, and we store it in the MA time frame double array that we have here. Also, we have to check if we were able to get the copy uh, or if we were able to copy um, the value from the buffer, because if not, it will return minus one. And this can happen, especially in indicators, if the, um, if the, uh, if the series is not loaded yet. So make sure to check if it's minus one here, and then you want to return zero, because then for the next run of the onCalculate, we will do everything again until the time frame uh, or the series is loaded. But if it not returns zero, then we just store the moving average time frame. So the higher or fixed time frame that we have from the inputs, uh, the value of this moving average, we store it in the moving average or MA array here, which then indicates the values on the chart time frame. And yeah, I know this is super confusing. You probably have to watch this several times and uh, have a look at it on your own uh, PC and play around with this a bit until you understand. Uh, for me personally, indicators are also usually confusing and more complicated to create than expert advisors. Um, but I think it's just praxis and um, I don't really write a lot of indicators. That's why it uh, always takes a bit of time also for me to work myself into this again. But if you have a look at this really closely and um, in your own pace, I'm sure you will understand and you will learn a lot. And if you just need the code, download it from the school community. I will upload it after this video. But yeah, I hope you liked this little insight. That's pretty much how you can um, create a multi-time frame moving average, which shows, which shows a fixed time frame moving average 
in every single chart you want. Um, that's it. Hope you liked it. And yeah, leave a comment. Have a great day and good trades. Bye.